Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around this entire world. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Room of Rooms. I guess that's it, what it's called. <laughs> uh, that's a little plus to a bonus room, right? Um, we really enjoy this time. I do apologize that I missed last week's. It was not uh, possible for me to get one uh, done. The uh, uh, issue certainly was not content. This subject that we're on, on these teachings, on the Tuesday night uh, presentation that we're bringing to you on the subject of the generation, uh, Ganea. And uh, it is uh, growing <laughs> this, uh, the power of this, just the same as Remember when we learned about an uh, an age, an aeon, as compared to the term world, and how that that really exploded on us because the understanding of it had been so buried by Christianity, and uh, as we have gone into this, it has become very important to understand this generation that is talked about in the New Testament. So then we've had to expand this to what God's view of the generation is. It was interesting while I was studying this, I think I found, uh, I wish I could give you the verse, but you could probably look it up, where Peter kind of reverse engineered the verse and it is almost embarrassing to read it. It's like, oh my God, I caught him. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think it's in the Psalms and it says that uh, it's talking about how that with God, a thousand years to God, once it has passed, for him, it's just like a day. So the entire concept is not talking about as Peter very, I'm telling you what, you know, and thanks for playing uh, Pete, but uh, uh, so you did something here with this that is just non-applicable uh, to the situation. So he took the thousand years and the day thing and projected it into the future. Well, the statement out of the scriptures is about a thousand years being like a day to God, but you go read it yourself. He's talking about the past. He's saying how that when a thousand years passes, that to a man, I mean, goodness gracious, uh, is, is quite a concept. But with God, when a thousand years has passed, it's it's like a day. And that is completely understandable. But when you're trying to justify why your prophecies are not fulfilled, why Jesus hasn't come back yet, why uh, people are beginning to notice that, hmm, this guy told us this was going to happen and it has not happened, and you completely reverse engineer a verse out of the Psalms, uh, you know, um, goodness gracious, Pete. I guess I'm just going to start calling him Pete from now on. Uh, this is uh, this is something that is uh, really quite tricky. Tricky Pete, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that was just in the process of getting ready to do this this evening. But we've pinpointed this generation that Jesus said, well, I've not pinpointed it. Jesus pinpointed it. Uh, Paul pinpointed this generation. Uh, uh, Apollos pinpointed this generation. We have pinpointed the generation that would not pass away until everything about the Jewishness of the scriptures was fulfilled. All prophecy uh, was fulfilled. All law being fulfilled and completely done away with. So, the, the fulfillment of the law and the doing away with the law are two subjects we're going to be going into in the future. We're going to be talking about it <clears throat> on this Friday show just a little bit, but only acknowledging that these are two things that we need to go in and kind of ferret out the difference in these two statements. Uh, but this issue of the generation has been drug around everywhere. You do not have the right to uh, establish this generation to being some other generation. I remember all the years I was growing up, the everybody reading this and this generation will not pass until everything's fulfilled. Well, I wonder which generation that is. Hmm. Well, 
There was never, ever a reason for wondering when because uh, Jesus identified it as the generation that was alive the same time he was alive. And uh, it is so very clear. It is just uh, uh, not disputable in any way. Now, the the term generation, though, is uh, can be compared to the term aeon because until the cross, there were many uh, uh, ages that came before. Uh, and as those ages, groups of ages accumulated, and then it talked about a time when that the... Uh, that the ages would be without end, that there would come an age that wouldn't end. So even though every age that came beforehand came and went, it came and went and came and went, an age was going to start that was never going to end. And that was the age that when righteousness came on the scene, that age would never end. You're going to be very surprised at how intricate the Hebrew scriptures are in maintaining this uh, quality of presentation of this generation. <clears throat> so I went back into the uh, Hebrew scriptures and uh, what we begin to find is that God had always planned a generation that would bring an end to all generations. God had planned from the beginning a single generation that would put an end to all previous generations. Now, we find that generation very clearly in Christ. So we're going to go through some of those uh, prophecies and uh, begin to see where that a generation began uh, that put an end to all subsequent generations because these generations were put there to measure prophecies. These ages were put there to uh, synchronize and uh, to uh, be able to codify prophecy and their times. Now, what Christianity had to do, because they don't believe the gospel. That was rather dramatic, Michael. <laughs> Uh, but they don't. I'm telling you, Christianity does not believe the gospel. They just simply do not believe it. You cannot believe in hell and say you believe in the gospel at all. You just can't. You don't. You you can hardly say you even believe the Bible at all and say that there is a place called hell. And uh, also that there is a group of sinners and a group of righteous people still out there. There is no understanding of the gospel from someone who presents that position. And as far as I know, they all present that position. Therefore, I am qualified in saying that Christianity and its 46,000 denominations and growing are still trying to figure this out. And uh, now we're trying to figure things out and learn things, but goodness gracious, uh, the train that uh, we got on has left this station and left behind Christianity completely. I am not a Christian. I do not claim to be a Christian. I will never attach my name to one of the most devastating uh, uh, religions that has ever been established on planet Earth. No more. Uh, I have no excuses for it. Uh, you cannot excuse it. You cannot wipe away its history, even though the attempts are made time after time after time. Even the Crusades, I've heard uh, Hagee get up and say, yeah, but that was just this little bitty, bitty, bitty amount of time and one or two, two people. It's like liar, liar, pants on fire, just uh, uh, Wikipedia, anything. And uh, an entire uh, several hundred years of Crusades that uh, was devastating. And it's not the only thing, not just the Crusades, but the, the discoveries of the new nations and the wiping out of generations of people uh, uh, and, and tribes and everything, you know, we repent and believe or we're going to kill you. And they did. 
uh, and, and now the slaughter is more of a mental and emotional slaughter. But please do not underestimate the fact that there is a slaughter still going on by Christianity. And that slaughter is now narrowed mostly to mental and emotional. But I tell you, when women die in a home and children die in homes because they heard the preacher say that you can't get a divorce and the wife has to submit to the husband, that is a crime committed by Christianity. Um, okay, now, I'm not going to get any further off the trail than that. I think my opinion is known and my view. But that's that's just history, folks. We're just dealing with daily newspaper. Go pick up your newspaper and read what is transpiring in the name of Christianity, in the name of the Lord. So uh, one of the things that a lot of our uh, friends do when they uh, try to understand the gospel is completely undermine the Hebrew scriptures. <laughs> one of the words that they don't like is that God is a jealous God. And, uh, but it's, it is so saturated. I was, uh, very amazed, uh, at to find this. And the reason that we are going to touch on these verses is because I wanted you to see that the term generation is very important. It means specific periods of time with specific groups of people. And so, uh, if you want to look these up, uh, this, all of these say, that God is a jealous God and that he will visit their sins and their actions and their deeds unto the third, even unto the fourth generation. And that's found in Exodus 20, verse 5, Exodus 34, verse 12, 34, verse 7, Deuteronomy 4, 24, Deuteronomy 5, uh, verse 9, Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, and also uh, Numbers 14, 18. This is just a sample. Believe me, there is far more. But what this does is establish that uh, God did see time in segments of ages and or generations, and especially generations. Uh, because we see uh, Matthew opening up and Luke opening up giving us genealogies of Christ, one starting with Adam and one starting with Abraham. And each of them were divided up into periods of time of 14 generations each. <clears throat> For those of you that glanced at the Facebook, and I, you know, gosh, go look this up. Look up Saul, uh, first king of Jerusalem. And it'll tell you that uh, we posted it on Facebook. I hope some of you got it. We didn't put a lot of information with it. But it says that Saul reigned from uh, 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 925 uh, or something like that until 1000 uh, BC. Well, 1000 BC is when King David started reigning. And uh, this reign of David, according to the prophets, would last 1,000 years. And then, of course, we have the 1,000-year reign of Christ, but we've not been able to place this. We're still placing it off into the future. But you see, you cannot have Jesus reigning for a 1,000 years after he has started reigning forever and ever. <laughs> uh, you can't go back to the old system and start measuring time when time itself has been done away with. Even generations themselves have been done away with. And that's what we're wanting to share with you in this particular segment. Uh, now, the, this transition it begins to be noted in the Psalms. <laughs> in Psalms 14, verse 5, it says, For God is in the generation of the righteous. Mm -mm. That one just tastes good. For God is in the generation of the righteous. So uh, this is actually a prophecy that was to be fulfilled as to where God was going to be. God's going to change his location of dwelling. He no longer dwells in heaven. That's the only concept that, he, uh, that the Hebrew scriptures give us, except for these glimpses into these prophecies 
about where God was going to live and reign and exist and move. In, in him, we live and move and have our being, but in us, he lives and moves and has his being. Mm -mm, that one tastes good too. <laughs> uh, so uh, a, a, a time was known that it was coming that uh, uh, generation after generation after generation and until that time when that the, the last generation would be cut off and that a new generation would begin a generation that no longer needs to be identified by time or a certain group because that's what generation was designed to do is to identify a certain group of people. And now this certain group of people stays the same forever and ever. So therefore, you have a generation that never ends. It's just good, folks. Psalms 22, verse 30. A seed shall serve him. We know that that's Christ. Many times, the how many teachers in the New Testament, especially in Hebrews, let us know that the seed was always about Christ. A seed shall serve him. The Lord will count that as a generation. Now, God tells you, I'm about to stop, start counting a generation differently. Now, we don't have a right to say, move around God's economy of time and the way he measures things like Peter did. Mm, Peter, we got you, Pete. Uh, but, but God did and could and, uh, and, and it's not can because now everything's been settled. Everything is where it will remain forever uh, in any way that we can get that word across that what forever means. It really does mean forever. So uh, uh, a seed shall serve him. There's so much in this. This is Psalms 22, 30. A seed shall serve him and the Lord will count that <laughs> as a generation. <laughs> oh, that one tastes good too, right? Uh, so uh, there came a time when there was no more need for counting generations because all the things that were being uh, were to be fulfilled from generation to generation, all the way through the thousand year reign of Christ, which was a thousand years before the cross, the only thing we did is turn around and look backward instead of looking forward. We should have known better than to be trying to look forward because looking forward from the cross for something to be fulfilled is ridiculous because Jesus said it is finished. That's why it's ridiculous. Uh, don't look Jesus in the face who said it is finished and then look for something that's unfulfilled. It does not exist. Generations are no longer counted by the Lord since the cross. Let me make that statement again. Since the cross, God stopped counting generations. Only one generation started that will never end. And it's counted as a generation because the people will never change. In what degree will they never change? They will never be known as sinners ever again. This is the generation of the righteous. Now, after the cross, God counted that one, as a one seed as a generation and that generation would never end. <laughs> and that's where God chose to live his existence is in the righteous, the generation of righteous. I'm telling you, I just get, I get giddy just going through this stuff. Uh, uh, and that these uh, generations don't get counted any longer. There's no, in God, now we count generations um, just like we, we count uh, different ages and things like that. Uh, you know, the uh, Renaissance and uh, all kinds of things uh, that we can count as ages. But God and his existence in the human race does not count these things at all anymore. And the less we count them and see them as God sees them, the more we will have more of the reality of the work of the gospel in the earth. 
Uh, and the same as God no longer uh, uh, counts uh, anything but righteousness in the same way God no longer counts evil or wrong as sin. And see, a lot of people say, well, you guys are crazy. You, you're saying that there's no such thing as good and evil. I, you know, one of our uh, people, uh, uh, gospel revolutionaries, I don't know if he's changed his mind or not, but uh, he said, no, he says, I don't even think in the terms of good and evil. Well, there's good and evil, folks. There's right and wrong. Uh, there's harm and there's kindness and there's unkindness. Uh, but the thing that has changed is that God, who is the one who called sin, sin, God now no longer identifies anything as sin because the economy of God has placed all human beings in a condition called righteousness. Now that requires a ring, 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 ring. That's, that's what happens in my brain all the time. <laughs> in case you were wondering what that day's look was on my face. So this is what I wanted to bring to you uh, in this uh, 15, uh, uh, 23 minute uh, session. And uh, goodness gracious, we have so much to learn about this. I thought we were just gonna crack this open and buzz right on. And here we are a month later and we're still going through this. And there's still very much to learn about this term generation, the Ghania, the very last Ghania. And we found the, fir the, one, uh, the first Ghania of, uh, and the generation of the reign of a thousand year reign of Christ and the last one. And uh, next week, we're going to uh, bring some more comments that Jesus had to say about that last generation. And he was talking to them and nobody but them. And it is powerful what we're going to be learning. Hope you've enjoyed this. Just remember, in God's counting of time, there is no more time. Time came to an end because time in God's economy was established to prophesy and to predict and to foretell and to predestine. So therefore, with God, there is no time. Therefore, with the cross, there is no sin. Therefore, after the cross, there is but one generation, and it is that seed was counted for an entire generation of righteousness in which God said, that's where I'm going to live. Love you guys.